Welcome, everyone, to the Falcon Mountain track. If you are joining us today, you likely want to explore Falcon Evolution in cloud native runtime security. Our journey started in 2016 when Falco, created by Sysdig, set a new standard in Linux security. In 2018, Falco became the first ever runtime security project incubated by the CNCF. And thanks to strong adoption contribution, two years later, it was elevated to the incubation level. But there is more. In 2021, the plugin system was introduced expanding the Falco domains, allowing uh, monitoring uh, cloud logs and enabling threat detection in cloud platform. Shortly after that, Falco Cattle, our ecosystem tool, made it easy to deploy and manage rules and plugins. In 2013, uh, the modern BPF driver based on the Compile Once Run Everywhere technology was introduced, making a leap forward in our kernel instrumentation. The last year, we also introduced the Rules Maturity Framework to provide standardization and guidance to our adopter and the Driver Kernel Testing Framework to ensure broadest FACO compatibility. These are just some initiatives that underscore Falco roles and Falco innovation and contribution in the cloud native landscape. But Falco is not just about technology, it is also about people. To make this explicit, two years ago, we announced our governance and formalized the value that have shaped Falco into an open, respectful, diverse, transparent and vibrant community. Our commitment to openness has always been the project's power and a call for everyone to join our journey. By the way, our journey holds a moment, a milestone that uh, underscores the Falco essential roles in cloud native. Thanks to our CNCF sponsor, Emily Fox and Justin Cormax. Thanks to anyone who has ever raised an issue, opened a pull request, or just participated in our communities. Thank to you all, we have reached the highest, the highest level in the, within the CNCF. Falcon, Falcon is now a graduated project. Thank you all. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Uh, thank you, Leo. So uh, we know that uh, the work that we did with the community, with the CNCF, uh, and with everyone pretty much to get Falco to the point of graduation was something that we all maintainers were involved in. But that didn't really stop the usual Falco programming, which means uh, uh, delivering new features, uh, delivering improvements uh, to all pretty much every aspect uh, of our project. So uh, in the next few minutes, uh, uh, myself and Jason, Carlos and Melissa will tell you a bit more about that, a bit more about what we did lately, apart from making Falco graduate. So uh, where, where are, which are the areas where we are improving Falco? So you are probably familiar uh, with, uh, with Falco, but if you're not, basically Falco acts uh, as a security camera for the cloud, which means that uh, we have a kernel module or any BPF probe that takes events, uh, and uh, we have rules that you can use to be alerted when any of those events happens. Also, we have a plugin system to allow broad compatibility with lots of data sources. And what we do is that uh, we have improved uh, the project in five, essentially five areas. So rules, material, and language, if you've used Falco rules, uh, we're making them better by, uh, by the day at each release. Plugins and integration with the ecosystem, newer detections, uh, and also, of course, uh, uh, taking care of the community and all the ecosystem projects that are around Falco. And last but not least, uh, we care a lot about the performance and security of the Falco project itself, the, the Falco uh, system. So uh, I would like to start with detection improvements because 
if you have um, if you have used Falco, you know that uh, we detect a lot of things. And if you are a security professional or if you are educated in security in any way, you know that every detection can be bypassed. It's it's a fact of life. So what do we do? We improve upon our existing steam detections uh, and we also add new ones so uh, last time uh, when we were in chicago we were talking about the fact that uh, we improved uh, our symbolic link resolution uh, a lot because uh, uh, that's uh, that's what was asked and so you probably have a question what is the falco bypass of the day and how we are making it and how we are making falco better and uh, this for the latest release uh, we have uh, uh, we, we have fixed a bypass uh, that is just this very tiny, innocent looking program that only runs one syscall, which usually is detected by Falco, but if you are on a 64-bit uh, architecture and you try to compile that on 32 bits, uh, then you get 32-bit syscall emulation uh, that used to uh, be silent uh, in the eBPF version of Falco, and you had to use the kernel module. We know that uh, many, many adopters uh, uh, really care about uh, using uh, eBPF and core eBPF, uh, and so we added this support for this latest release. Uh, also, uh, I think for this one, we had uh, an issue open for probably a couple years. So uh, what people want to do is, uh, and uh, a lot of people here at KubeCon tell us that uh, they want to use our rules uh, that we distribute and modify them just a little bit. So basically, instead of having to rewrite your own rules or copy paste them, you want to be able to take the existing rule that is loaded by Falco and then apply your over override and your modifications to it. So for example, in this rule, you might want to uh, you might want to add something to the condition uh, and you want to replace the output because it, it conforms with what uh, you want to do. And it was very awkward to do it before and we know. So we have introduced uh, a new override section so you can basically create a rule that has the same name as an existing rule and tell that you only want to modify certain fields uh, and you want to append to certain fields. Of course, not all fields can be appended or replaced. Well, all fields can be replaced, but not everything can be appended. If you try to append the true to false, probably not going to work, but still. And this pairs very well with uh, an, another rules announcement uh, that we did uh, on, uh, in, the, in the last version, uh, which is the fact that we now can match uh, an arbitrary number of rules for each event. So this gives uh, much more flexibility for, uh, for any adopter that wants to customize the rule set, which is something that uh, you are going to do if you, if you are serious uh, with, the user, with your use of Falc. And of course, uh, that's, that's something that I'm personally passionate about. Uh, we have uh, improved a lot uh, our testing uh, infrastructure. We improve it uh, every time, uh, and we are now very proud to have both kernel testing for all our drivers uh, with a, a massive test matrix, uh, and we have uh, some repos that maybe got a little bit out, out of hand with 47 different checks for each PR, but it's 47 is much better than two, so uh, we are very we are very happy about that. Uh, and also, there is always this uh, uh, annoying security person that uh, uh, suggests and lightly forces the security checking tools uh, on each PRs to the other. And the annoying security person is me. I'm sure that the other maintainers love me for that. So, and um, and of course, uh, we are very we are always uh, very happy to improve stability and security of the Falco project. There's a lot to improve in security with Falco. Uh, but we have people that care a lot about Falco's performance, and I think most of, of the users of Falco do. So, and uh, who else uh, is uh, the most uh, expert in Falco performance than our maintainer, Melissa? Would you like to tell us a bit more about how we're improving performance? Thanks, Luca. Next. The busy person's tour of Falco performance. It's a very tough topic, but we've only got five minutes. Suppose you have a very beefy server, let's say with 128 CPUs and 21 million syscall events per second that you're interested in monitoring. At the same time, um, you have to balance the overhead and the capabilities. And uh, let's go over to the next slide. So for the kernel driver portion, there are three options available. If you're going strong with a kernel 
Your choice is the kernel module. It has been around for a very long time. This is why there isn't even a mascot for it. Downsides are that you can crash the kernel. And measuring the kernel side performance overhead is very difficult, but it is still the most performant driver. A safer alternative is eBPF, and Falco supports it starting with kernel 4.14. Starting with kernel 5.8, you can use Falco's modern eBPF driver. Powered by the rocket drive, compile once, run everywhere. It's very beautiful from a DevOps perspective because now we can bundle the kernel driver within the user space binary, and it works for every kernel and every distribution just out of the box. Sending events from kernel space up to user space happens over buffers. The traditional eBPF driver allocates one buffer per CPU. For a very long time, the kernel buffer size was hard-coded in Falco. Making this kernel buffer size configurable marked a significant milestone for Falco. Because if any of these buffers is full, rien ne va plus and the events are lost forever. For the modern eBPF driver, you can even share the buffers among multiple CPUs. Since Falco 0.35, or last year May, you have precise control over the syscall's Falco monitors. In order to function properly, Falco requires a few additional syscalls than just the ones you define in the rules. We then collect all of these syscalls of interest and inject them into the kernel over a map. Looking at the left side of the diagram, whenever a non-interesting syscall triggers, we immediately exit the monitoring logic without interfering. Everything is passive in Falco. Looking at the right side of the diagram in user space, we have to create a nice movie where Falco, the hero, wins. This involves time ordering the events when scanning the buffers, which is currently our biggest bottleneck. Falco's state engine and user space is what makes Falco so powerful. It allows you to correlate events across different syscalls. For example, if you have a process that opens a file, you know the command line argument, something that is not available at the same time in the kernel. A recent trend and under, under consideration for Falco is wanting to push rules matching into the kernel. However, if you are not very careful, you may end up creating a horror movie instead. This is because you are in the kernel, in the application context, and you can slow down everything. In severe cases, the SREs may even ask you to turn off the tool altogether. How to win? How to find the right balance and the right trade-off? Benchmarking and never stop improving. Falco's participation in the CNCF environmental sustainability tag is a great first step towards that goal. Switching gears, if you ever found yourself overwhelmed by navigating the upstream Falco rules, the new rules maturity framework may come in handy. Please be aware that it is a best effort on the part of the community and ultimately you have to decide which rules, if any, are interesting or useful to you. Jason, please take it away and share the Pride plug and play future of Falco with us. Thank you. Happy graduation, everyone. So we're going to discuss right now about the newest developments of the plugin ecosystem. Um, first of all, it has been very active over the past year and very prolific with new plugins as well and integrations. And I think this acts as a testament of how the plugin initiative is enabling new contributions and driving diverse contributions in the project. So I'm just going to focus on the past eight months because we discussed a bit of this also uh, in KubeCon NA last year. Uh, we have a new plugin uh, that basically turns Falco into a syslog server, so you can just dump your logs to Falco and then do runtime detection on them. We have integrations for Box and Salesforce, so you can basically have activity and security logs from those platforms piped into Falco for monitoring and detection purposes. We have a new integration with GKE, uh, so this is actually a flavor of the already existing Kubernetes audit logs plugin, uh, but instead of receiving uh, webhooks from the API server directly, which is harder to, to deploy and a lot of like um, adopters complain about it, we just grab the logs right from the platform, so it's much easier to de deploy and use. Um, the GCP audit plugin instead 
has been there already since before KubeCon NA, but has been growing a lot and we have we went through a couple of releases very recently, so please check that out. And uh, there's also the anomaly detection plugin, which Melissa over here is working on, which will basically try to make Falco adaptive based on the host, you know, the workload is seeing, and uh, try to make rules as less noise, as noisy as possible. Um, this is a plugin that doesn't deal with cloud logs, but with system calls specifically, so host use cases like the traditional Falco ones. And uh, last but not least, which we're very excited about, we also have a brand new plugin that provides Kubernetes cluster metadata, which we're going to cover in a second. I want to stress that Falco nowadays is capable of digesting all this information also in the same instance, so you have a lot of flexibility deployment-wise. Speaking about Kubernetes, uh, like most of you know, Falco supported that natively since always. Uh, and besides the deployment scenarios, one interesting, that we, interesting thing that we do is we also communicate with the API server and we collect as much metadata as we can in order to enrich the security events emitted by Falco. So, for example, uh, if you receive a security event because someone uh, is opening a shell in your container, we can say what was the host, what was the container image and name, but also the pod name, what deployment that pod was for, you know, and so, so on and so forth. Um, this piece of functionality was super valuable for adopters, but also one of the things that was harder to maintain for us uh, because of issues, scalability problems, uh, for some key reasons. Uh, first is that we started uh, you know, integrating this so early on that we had to develop our own client for the API server, which of course is a maintenance cost. Second, the communication model we had with the API server had scalability issues in larger clusters, which our adopters present uh, you know, as a complaint of, you know, more and more. And uh, third, consuming all this information on the Falco instance had a big you know, performance stall uh, that you know, put the tool under stress. So basically, this new feature has been re-implemented and rethinked entirely as a plugin using the newest features of the plugin API. The good thing is that this has massively improved scalability and performance uh, of the solution, so please make sure to check it out. Uh, we were able to remove the previous legacy implementation, which was about 30,000 lines of code, and uh, People don't usually brag about removing code instead of adding new ones, but we're really happy about it because it was a big obstacle in contributions and also bug resolutions for us. This is also written in Go, so it's much easier uh, to contribute to, and it's a standalone component that we release and developed separately from the Falco core code base. Uh, given the fact that it's written in Go, we also have available out of the box all the packages you know, uh, of the Kubernetes ecosystem in the most modern way. Um, this is out since Falco 0.37 this January, so please make sure Sure, testing and let us know what you think. For whoever was used to the older support in Kubernetes metadata, I wanted to give a brief summary. So on the left, you can see the fields that Falco had available before, and I want to provide everyone reassurance that we didn't remove them. There's no breaking change whatsoever. Uh, what we did is part of them are still supported. So all the fields that we can basically extract from the container runtime or for the host information that Falco has available without communicating with the VI server, it's still there. All the other fields are deprecated and will just return at you know, a non-available value. Uh, value, value if you use the rules, but at least you don't have your rules being rejected if you still use that stuff. Instead, on the right, you see the new fields that we provide with the plugin, probably new ones will be added in the future. We named this field class KTS meta for this ambiguation, as as you see, there's a lot more like pod information, namespace, deployment, uh, services, and so on. So the plugin API is effectively becoming slowly and slowly the you know the technical backbone on which we do innovation in Falco, both in like refactoring what's already there and also bringing new features. Um, and you know a big effort happened over the past year specifically to make it more and more powerful and basically hook into most, if not all, of the execution points of Falco. Uh, and it's becoming. You know, it's this close to be becoming powerful enough to basically do what Falco does. So we're basically refactoring also the Falco code to comply to it. Um, looking back uh, before, you know, I think around March last year, we started releasing the ability of sharing state between plugins. So like plugins right now can access the thread and, and actually the thread information that Falco collects from the system. And uh, we recently add support to injecting asynchronous events with time sensitive priority. We have a native logger. We have the ability of doing dynamic reconfiguration of the plugins at runtime. Plus we updated the C++ and Go SDKs to, you know, be in sync with all the newest features. 
uh, what's coming next, uh, accessing also the file descriptor information, which will be useful for the anomaly detection plugin, which is in the working, um, supporting non-trivial data types, because right now we just support for developers, uh, you know, integers and strings and, and you know, a few others. A native metric support, metric support, potentially you know being exported through a Prometheus uh, endpoint in the future, and we're also looking forward to new SDKs in new languages. And stay tuned because we may have something to reveal about that in the next, uh, in the near future. Uh, before finishing, uh, this is another initiative totally unrelated, which I'm still part of, which is the Google Summer of Code. So we participated as a project uh, through the CNCF organization last year. It was an amazing experience, and it turned out let it us gain a new contributor and a new maintainer, uh, you know, having the Falco playground for rules development uh, to light. And uh, we also set our presence in the WebAssembly Day at last KubeCon NA. So we are also candidating a new project for Summer of Code 2024. We are, I think, at this point in the application process. We look forward to work with a new student. So please check it out for wherever you is interested. This year, we are proposing working on uh, systematic performance testing of Falco. We would like to have this kind of checks, uh, checks in our CI CD pipelines. And we want to also revamp the event generator, which is a very valuable project that kind of enables this stuff but didn't receive much love over the past two years. So, yeah, we're going to work on that. Leaks are in the slide. Carlos? Thank you. Uh, we're going to do a quick tour about the Falco ecosystem. Like, uh, Falco itself already explained here. We're going to do, like, the, the tools around Falco to help you to extract the best of Falco itself. The first one is Falco Sidekick, which is... Uh, we add more outputs. Fault Sidekick is a tool that uh, receives uh, information alerts and everything that you set in Falco, and it exports to whatever output you want. Like, for example, we add the hotel traces, diner traces, zoomologic for the previous one, but we have uh, uh, outputs for a lot of uh, uh, applications and systems that you can use, for example, Slack, Mattermost, or, or other systems. Uh, this tool was uh, created initially by, uh, 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 in that time, he was just a contributor, Thomas, and uh, it's written in Go. Everybody like, uh, it's easy to, to understand and, and uh, uh, contribute for that. The QR code here is for another tool that we are working, it's called the Falco Talon, that's going to help you to integrate with Falco and do the uh, engine for automated, uh, like, uh, um, engine response, like they, you're going to create your rules in Falco, as soon we get like detected an, an threat on an issue, we can like have this Falco Talon that can act and resolve and act in the, in the issue back automatically, that you can create the, the things. You can scan the QR code and go straight to the project page for that. It's a, a brand new thing that we are working on. Second one is Falco CTL, Falco Cuttle, whatever you guys want to call that, like I call Falco CTL. It got like a brand new features. Now you, you can download drivers and replacing the not using batch scripts anymore. We also can, uh, you can like push and uh, download the rules and plugins and drivers, everything using Falco CTL. And now we uh, also, we have uh, the signatures for the rules and plugins using cosine, six star cosine. And now we add more features like you can use a key MS instead of the, uh, your own key or the keyless approach. The other one is uh, the chart v4 that we've been working like to make it easier for install and maintain. Now that, that uh, Jason explained the, the meta collector, it's much easier now to, to install out of the box this compatibility. And uh, it's our also install automatic rules and plugins using the, the Helm chart for that. And you, you can use the, the Falco CTL uh, together with the Helm to detect and use your driver. Last one is the, I think this is pretty cool, like the, the Falco Playground, that you can try out your rules and uh, test. The, the QR code here goes straight to that page. I hope you guys try out and give us any feedback about the issues. Leo? Yeah. Thank you, Carlos. Okay. Uh, uh, immediately after the graduation, 
we asked ourselves a question. And now what? After a while, uh, uh, we found a very simple answer, and basically is uh, make Falco even better and our user even happier. To achieve this, we crafted a, a special roadmap that uh, we are thrilled to announce today. The Falco 1.0 was published this morning on our website, and uh, uh, while 1.0 might seem just like a number, it actually represents a promise, to, um, a promise to maturity and stability to our users. To give you just a quick overview of the roadmap, this roadmap aims to introduce things like standard designs, standard making more standardization of future adoption and deprecation, introducing uh, advanced metrics for Falco and making the modern BPF the default driver. We are also working on our distribution system to make it more aligned with uh, Linux best practice and make the Falco deployment even more user-friendly and secure. This roadmap also set a vision for the Falco feature. We indeed are working to uh, integrate Falco in third-party distribution, like the cloud marketplace. We are working also to improve our integration with uh, uh, cloud providers, and we are pioneering new innovation. If you are curious, check out our roadmap at falco.org. We are near the end of the presentation, and you can uh, find us on Slack or meet us during our weekly community, community call. You will find all the links on our website, on falco.org. If you join us, you will, will shape the future of cloud-native runtime security with us. Thank you all. I want to say also thank you to Jason, Carlos, Melissa, and Luca. Thank you.